What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be turning this cheap Android phone into a full-fledged desktop PC. Great for work, media playback, gaming, and even emulation. These devices can be had for as little as $120 used over on eBay, and in some cases it might be well worth it. Usually, when we think about a desktop operating system or desktop mode on an Android device, we think of Samsung and Samsung DeX, but Motorola also has their own desktop mode that has come a very long way since the last time we took a look at it on the channel. And it used to be known as Moto Ready 4, but I think they may have renamed it to Moto Connect. Either way, this is really great. They've done a lot of optimizations, and with this little device here, we actually get a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU, so it's packing quite a bit of power given the price point. This is not a new device. I actually picked this up used over on eBay. I went in with the best offer. I got mine for $117 ship. There's several available, and this is the 2022 Motorola Edge Plus 5G. I got the unlocked Verizon version, and I'm not going to be using this as an everyday cell phone. I've already got one of those. I basically picked this up to turn it into a game console, desktop PC, and even a workstation. In this video, we've got quite a bit to cover with this device, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Newegg. Whether you're looking for cell phones, monitors, TVs, hard drives, Newegg definitely has you covered. And right here at their New at Newegg section, they've got a lot of great deals on some DDR5 RAM for your new PC build, lots of fans. You can go to their New at Newegg section, sort by price, category, and you can even find just the in-stock items right here. Usually when I'm looking for parts for a new PC build, I check the in-stock. I personally don't want to have to wait a few weeks for something to get into stock. And one of their newest features over on their website is their custom PC builder. And you can actually build with AI right now, but we've got the popular ranking section over here on the right hand side, number one in the popular ranking, but we can also check out lower price builds. But if you're looking for something a bit different, you can use their new Build with AI section. So what I'm going to do is just type in a few keywords here, like low cost PC for playing games at 1080p. Go ahead and Build with AI. And now we've got three different suggestions here. And with each one of these, we can totally customize it. So for instance, if we didn't want to include an RTX 3060 with this, we could swap it out for something a bit lower end, like an RX 6600. It'll probably bring that price down a bit. But this is a really great feature that I personally haven't seen on other websites, and this will point you in the right direction if you're looking to build a custom gaming PC. So if you're interested in checking Newegg out, I'll leave some links down below. The 2022 Edge Plus isn't the only device that supports Motorola Ready 4. They have a chart over on their website, and I know it's a bit hard to see here in a YouTube video, but I'll leave a link to it down below. And keep an eye out because the way I like to connect mine is over a USB Type-C connection. So USB Type-C to HDMI adapter or a little dock. That's going to give you the best performance. You're not going to get any latency from the phone to the display. But there are other devices out there that support kind of a wireless mode like this. Personally, I haven't had really good luck with it. So that's why I opted to get the Moto Edge Plus 5G. This is the 2022 model. We've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, a 6.7 inch, 144 hertz display, Android 13 once you're updated. And of course, this supports Moto Ready 4, otherwise known as Moto Connect. Now, in order to get this up and running, there are a few other things that I highly suggest getting along with it. And you might have some of this stuff already at the house. Keyboard and mouse is definitely a must with the desktop operating system, but keep in mind you can always use the phone's built-in screen to navigate your external display. There is a built-in digital touchpad. If you're looking to play games on this, definitely go with the controller. One of my favorites is the Xbox controller. It'll connect right over Bluetooth. And we also need a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. I will leave links for everything in the description below, but a new one that I recently picked up is this little dock system. It's pretty cheap. I think it was about $18. And what we get here is a USB Type-C to HDMI docking system with three USB ports. It also has a micro SD card slot plus our power in. So you can just kind of slot your phone right down in here. But the cool thing about this one is it does have this extendable USB Type-C cable. So if you wanted to connect this to a different device that just won't sit in the dock, you can actually just take this right out. That way, if you wanted to connect it to a tablet, shouldn't be an issue there. The last item here is totally optional, but it's something that I suggest if you want that sustained performance out of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and that's a little phone cooler. These are pretty cheap over on Amazon. This is the newest one that I picked up. Basically, it's a thermoelectric cooler. 
One side gets hot, we got that fan, the other side gets cold, and yeah, it will cool your phone down and increase performance if that phone is thermal throttling. Comes with a little sticky back metal ring that you'll put on the back of the device, and then this magnetically attaches to your phone. As a lot of us already know, these phones can get quite hot after an extended period of use, and in turn, performance will decrease because the CPU and GPU need to downclock in order to cool itself off, but with a cooler like this, you can get sustained performance. This cooler is not battery powered, but you could always run a USB Type-C cable from the dock you have everything set up in. But it's really easy to get into desktop mode with the 2022 Edge. As Soon as we plug it in, we're gonna be presented with a screen that looks a little something like this. And again, we've got that built-in touchpad on the phone screen, so we can totally navigate this. Plus, it's got a few extra buttons that Samsung DeX doesn't. Like we've got a home button, volume button, actually some really cool features that they've added since the last time we took a look at Ready 4. As you can see, we've got a couple different sections to choose from, and I will plug this into my game capture to get a better look. But the first thing we're taking a look at here is just our video section or our streaming section. With this little setup, it'll automatically import apps like Netflix, HBO, and Hulu. Once we launch them, it'll go full screen, so it's kind of our media section. Back at the main menu, we've got a video chat section, which will allow us to use the built-in front or rear camera on the phone to do video chats with Skype and other apps. Gaming section, so it automatically imported a lot of the games that I have here. And you can always go through and import your own. But what I really wanted to show off with this video and device is desktop mode itself. And with this, we get that full screen experience. The monitor that I'm connected to right now only goes up to 1440p. And with the 2022 Edge Plus, I can do 1440p, 60 hertz with this little dock here. And if you really wanted to, you could always mirror the phone's display. But when we're in mirror mode, we're just not going to get that full screen experience. You could turn the phone sideways while you're playing a game, but you're going to have those black bars either on the top, bottom, or left or right. So having desktop mode easily accessible is really awesome. So what I'm going to do now is just plug this into my capture device so we can get a better look at everything. So from desktop mode, we can go back to the experience hub at any given time for our TV or video apps, video chat, using the built-in camera on the phone. You can use the rear or the front. But of course, the mobile desktop, in my opinion, is the big feature here. And it's definitely on par with Samsung DeX now. They've done a lot of updating to uh, Ready4 or Moto Connect. I'm not exactly sure what they want it called right now, but uh, in the past, it was definitely known as Ready4. We can access everything that we have installed on this device from desktop mode. It does support freeform windows. You see, we could place this anywhere. We can resize it. It's got a snap feature, so we can bring it over to either side. We'll minimize it just by dragging it out. And we'll take it down. So if we wanted to open up several apps, not a problem to do so. Jump into the calculator. We'll also open a Chrome and again, resize any of this. Also, if you wanted desktop mode, we can access the desktop site on most sites right here. So we get that full desktop experience. And as you can see, I mean, it's definitely snappy here. Everything loads up really quickly. And we've only got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in this device. There are newer devices on the market from Motorola that support Ready4 right now with more powerful chipsets. But this is an older device I wanted to pick up just to see what we could do with it. And in my opinion, it's a pretty nice experience with desktop mode on this device. When it comes to customizations, we can go ahead and right click the desktop, wallpapers, got several to choose from here. We'll go with, uh, we'll just go with this one. You can see we've got different ones. You can add your own if you want to. I'm gonna keep it right here. Screen timeout, we can set this up to 60 minutes. Display and font size, and right now we are at 1440p. Some people might find the font or just the overall size of everything a bit small. We can go ahead and bring this up. We can also bring that font up, but you'd probably be better off just setting that resolution a bit lower. I'm gonna leave it just like this for the video. Mouse and input, pointer speed, mouse pointer size, primary button, sound, multi-playback, and this will allow us to kind of play back through HDMI or USB Type-C and the device itself. Mode and resolution, desktop or mirror mode, and we can set up our resolution from here. And we've got the advanced section, new apps on home screen. And speaking of the home screen, fully customizable. So let's say I wanted to throw uh, Call of Duty Warzone on there. Right click, add the shortcut right to the desktop. Do it with this. 
So we do have a little bit of customization. We've also got a pretty nice notification section over here. This will also allow us to basically control everything we need here. We can set up airplane mode. All of our notifications will come in on this bottom panel. We can set up some media playback at any given time and control it directly from the notification center. We've also got our settings pane down here. So we can go ahead and lock the screen, screenshot, desktop settings, Wi-Fi. You can add more down here if you need to. Plus we've got our battery percentage. Right now it is charging since it's in the dock. So having that multi-window support is really handy. And I do like the animations they use here. As you can see, it goes transparent. And this snap button really does come in handy. You want to run multiple apps, have one side by side. We can also resize it right here. So when it comes down to it, using something like this as an everyday desktop would work out just fine for a lot of people. So you've got your web browser, which is one of the main things a lot of people do on the PC. Obviously, since we're working with Android here, we can easily check our email. You can edit documents. You could download Microsoft Suite if you wanted to, or you could go with Google Docs. And of course, we do have full access to the Google Play Store, even in desktop mode. And it does scale pretty nicely. I've seen some of these desktop modes look pretty horrible, but this actually gives us a lot on one page. So we've got our apps, games, and others. And I've installed a bunch of stuff here. So for instance, let's say you wanted to do a little bit of video editing. This is something that I've been using with Dex, but I use Adobe Rush over there. Unfortunately, I cannot download it. So I found another app that actually works pretty nicely on these bigger screens known as Filmora. And you've probably heard of this. I've used it on PC before, if I can find it. I've got it installed somewhere. There it is. We'll just go ahead, create a new project, import a video that I have here. Scrub through the timeline pretty quickly. And I wouldn't use this for professional video editing, but for home videos, you could definitely get by with this. We'll just go ahead and add some effects. And I believe right here, we'll go with VHS. And I'm just using the free version right now. There's still tons of stuff available here. You can go through, you can crop, you can speed up, you can slow down, add effects, add filters. And of course we can export something like this. And since this is such a short video, it's going to export pretty quickly. We can view it now, and I've just installed uh, Google Files. That way I can access all of the storage here. Go ahead and play it. And there you have it. So it's pretty cool that we can get some video editing done. And if you wanted to do some photo editing, you could always download something like Lightroom. This one does scale pretty good with these 16 by 9 displays. You might need to experiment with it, but yeah, again, for everyday normal desktop use, web browsing, email checking, document editing, we've got a pretty decent operating system that's quick enough with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to get basically everything done. And one big question I always get when showing off these desktop modes is, does it affect performance? Are we going to see lower performance in desktop mode as opposed to on the phone's built-in screen? I wanted to show you that it really doesn't. I ran some benchmarks in desktop mode and then just in regular Android on the phone itself. Keep in mind, I was using that thermoelectric cooler with both of these tests here. And as you can see, in desktop mode, single core, 1,672, multi, 4,305. And as you can see, in regular Android mode, we got a higher single core by a little bit, but a lower multi-core score. And I think what's happening here is it's actually activating a better performance governor when it's in desktop mode. Here's a GPU benchmark, Wildlife Extreme, 2,601 in desktop mode, 2,182 in regular Android mode. And finally, we've got Antutu. 1,159,076 in desktop mode. And you can see it's coming in a bit lower in regular Android. So yeah, I think it does use the performance governor when we go right into desktop mode, which will give us a little better performance. But one of my favorite things about having a desktop mode is just full screen gaming. One of my favorite controllers to use with any Android device is just an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, but you could go wired with it if you want to. I've got mine connected over Bluetooth right now. And we'll just launch a game. I've got a few to test here, plus some emulators. We'll just go with Asphalt 9. And most of these games will automatically go full screen. But keep in mind, you can scale these down, move them around. You could have a video going on one side, playing a game on the other. Personally, I just like having that full screen experience. Here's Asphalt 9 running really well on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. 
Remember, we do have the resolution of the desktop mode at 1440p, but I personally don't think that these games are running at that kind of resolution. I think it does scale it down. And if we were to run this in mirror mode, we'd have black bars on the top and bottom because the phone's built-in screen is a totally different aspect ratio than most TVs out there, which are usually 16 by nine. Next up, we've got Diablo Immortal. I'm at high settings. We can't go to ultra on this device. I guess it's whitelisted given that we do have the gen one instead of the gen two or gen three, but we can go up to 60 FPS and it's fully playable. This is another one of those games that has great controller support on Android, but you will run into a few games like Genshin Impact that do not support controllers on Android. So you will have to use a third party controller mapper, something like Mantis Buddy. And what that's gonna do is map on-screen touch points to physical controls. And then you can play games like Genshin Impact, but I just went with games that natively supported controllers. And the final one here for the Android side of things is Call of Duty Mobile. Very high settings, 60 FPS, and as you can see, I mean, it looks pretty good here. Now I wanted to move over to a little bit of emulation in desktop mode. And the first thing we've got here is some Dreamcast using ReDream. We're over 1080p right now. You can up the resolution with this emulator. You're not gonna have any issues on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with Dreamcast. And even when it comes to PSP, 3X resolution with PPSSPP and Chains of Olympus running at 60. I'm pretty sure we could go up a bit higher with this, but I mean, looking at it on the screen itself at 3X, it looks really good. And the easier to run games, you can definitely scale up much more if you wanted to. And finally, we've got the Dolphin emulator. I'm at 720p with Soul Calibur 2. With most of the harder to emulate games, you will have to go down to the native resolution. Something like F-Zero just isn't gonna run at 720p with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, at least not on this system. I did have some issues with it. But a lot of the easier to run stuff is gonna work great here. Overall, I think this could be a great little setup for some people out there, given the price and performance. I got mine for less than $120, but that's kind of the going price that I've seen over on eBay. Amazon does have some renewed devices that will work, but I've seen them up at around $140. If you wanted to spend a little more, you always could. It's up to you. I will leave links in the description to everything I used with this setup, but I'd love to know your thoughts. I mean, is this something that you'd be interested in doing? Are you going to skip it? Would you rather pick up an older Samsung phone with Samsung DeX? Let me know in the comments below, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.